a heaviest satellite in orbit using the LVM3 rocket. ISRO's LVM3 rocket places the 6.5 ton Bluebird Block 2 satellite of US based form AST Space Moby into a 520 kilometer circular orbit. The Prime Minister of Indi India, Narendra Modi, has congratulated ISRO for the new milestone. He has said that it strengthens the foundation for future missions such as Gaganyan. And the Prime Minister has also said that the success of the heavy lift LVM3 rocket also reinforces India's growing role in global commercial launch markets. PM Modi has said that the LVM3 launch was also reflective of efforts towards okay and India and congratulated hard working space scientists and engineers. We're now joined by Dr. B R Guru Prashad, a renowned former ISRO scientist and public relations officer and current director of the Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium in Bangalore. Thank you very much for joining us here on the program. <clears throat> what makes this such a significant day um, in Indian space travel? How big of a development is this? Uh, good afternoon uh, to all the viewers. And uh, yes, it is a very significant day for India. And uh, as it was told, it's indeed a milestone because India's heaviest rocket and the most complex and the most capable rocket, LVM3, which is affectionately dubbed as Bahubali, mm. okay, it has launched a very heavy satellite. It is, satellite is not only heavy, 6,500 kilograms, okay, that is the heaviest launched by LVM3 so far. It had launched 72 satellites for a UK-based thing earlier, and uh, together in each launch, they weighed around six tons. This time it is 6.5 tons almost. So it is a very heavy satellite. At the same time, it is a very sophisticated satellite, in fact, because this satellite, uh, Bluebird Block 2 satellite, the first one in that series, it is going to bring um, cellular uh, broadband uh, uh, data, the facilities to the ordinary uh, mobile phones, that is smart mobile phones, in fact. This is a very significant step that is as far as the satellite is concerned. But as far as the rocket is concerned about which we are more worried about, okay, we are concerned about, I'm sorry, is that the launch went picture perfect. It was a textbook launch. And the fact that the satellite was put into an orbit which was barely 1.5 kilometers away from its intended one, that speaks volumes for India's capability and India's skills. And you know, it was told that India has already launched 434 satellites for 34 countries. And many of them are from the United States. And another GSLV rocket a few months back that launched the uh, NISAR satellite, which was built jointly by NASA and ISRO. So Indian launch vehicles have come a long way. And it is very pertinent to remember here on this special day that Indian uh, uh, space program was formally inaugurated, formally inaugurated on November 21st, 1963, with the launch of a small sounding rocket. Sounding rocket is nothing but a research rocket provided by NASA, and its scientific instrument was from France. But today, December 24th, 2025, from that time in 62 years, we have come a long way. And today we launched an American satellite weighing 6,000, uh, a whooping 6,500 kilograms into an orbit perfectly. So this is a, this is indeed a milestone. This is a, this is a time, this is the, this is a day to celebrate as far as India is concerned. Yes, all uh, of us have to celebrate. And, and, and yes, and where does India, <clears throat> sorry, now stand um, when it comes to space capabilities? Of course, the United States and China is, is, is massively ahead of anywhere else, anyone else. However, how, where does India now stand when it comes to this? See, when it comes, when we talk of space capabilities, we talk of end-to-end -end capability in 
satellites and robotic spacecraft and human spaceflight. For example, end-to-end -end capability in satellite domain means design, development, building, testing, launching a satellite, launching a satellite, that is very important. It, that capability is not easy to acquire, as well as to maintain the satellite in orbit, manage it in orbit, as well as to utilize it effectively. And you know, for that you need launch vehicles for launching the satellites. So in the satellite domain, in the launch vehicle domain, and at the same time, as far as space exploration is concerned, uh, uh, you need robotic spacecraft and India has already proved its worth in the case of the moon, in the case of Mars and now it is busy in studying the sun from a vantage point. So in all these three domains India has excelled but it has taken up now the human space flight program, the first step of which is Gaganyaan and the same rocket LVM3 is going to launch India's uh, Gaganyaan spacecraft from the Indian soil containing an Indian astronaut, in fact. So four astronauts have already been uh, trained mm -hmm. and Shuban Shushukla, one of them already participated as the pilot of Axiom 4 mission successfully. And definitely Gaganyan adds, adds a new dimension, but it, it, it augurs well. Today's successful launch of LVM-3 brings more confidence to Indian scientists, but the rocket has it is being uh, uh, human rated that is its reliability has been significantly enhanced so this is this is where india stands and you know when it comes to complex space technology i told you end to end capability we have in all these things only six countries we have united states uh, russia china japan and in europe Significantly, it is France, okay? Germany, UK, they are there, but uh, France has acquired its own uh, niche in this mm. regard, and of course, India. So Dr. Dr. This, is the, this is where we stand. Yes, Dr. Guru Prashad, thank you for bringing so much clarity to that. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you for taking